You're listening to the My Simplified Life podcast, and this is episode number 138. Welcome to the My Simplified Life podcast, a place where you will learn that your past and even your present don't define your future. Regardless of what stage of life you're in, I want you to feel inspired and encouraged to pursue your dreams, simplify your life, and start taking action today. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac, and I'm excited to share my stories and life lessons with you while taking you on my own journey. This is my simplified life. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac. Now, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but (laughs) the big but, I have been complimented quite a bit on my interview skills. And I haven't taken a class on it. I haven't practiced it. It comes kind of naturally. And I have to say, it is one of my favorite things to do. I much rather interview someone than do a solo episode. (laughs) Uh, And one of the reasons why is because I just love people. I love to connect with another human being. And yet at the same time, it seems like it's one of those strange things because Nine times out of 10, it's a stranger that I'm talking to. And we don't connect with strangers usually. We don't stop in the grocery store and strike up a conversation that then lasts 30 minutes to an hour. But on a podcast, that's exactly what we do. So I put together some of my tips on what I think it takes to be a great interviewer, and I wanted to share them with you. I want to share what the prep looks like on my end of how I go into a podcast interview and why I think that they're successful, what makes them successful. So the first thing is obviously, and it should be obvious, and yet I have to say it because even if you're the person being interviewed, oftentimes this is something that gets missed. And that's to simply remove the distractions that are around you. Turn off your phone, turn off your email, or at least don't have the email screen looking right at you so you can see what comes into your inbox. You know, get rid of the alerts that are coming on your phone. Be fully present in this moment. It's literally going to be 30 minutes of your day. And if you can't commit to those 30 minutes, then you shouldn't be doing the interview. Whether you're the person being interviewed or the interviewer, those are going to be hard rules in my book for a podcast interview to be good and successful. So now before you even start your interview, days before, it could even be a month before, you need to do your research. If the person you're interviewing has a book, please read it. I read it from cover to cover. I know that there are some hosts who, um, A, don't read the book or they skim the book. And to me, there's all kinds of details that you could be missing if you don't read the book in its entirety. I love to come at it with fresh eyes and The fact that I get to ask an author a question about something in the book is so special and relevant to me, and it's not something you normally get to do. Think about what books are on your bookshelf right now. What have you been reading? And is there a moment where you're going through it and wondering, oh, I wonder why they added this? Or what could this have been like? You know, I'm in the middle right now of reading Richard Branson's Losing My Virginity, and He details the business process to all of his companies and how they started. And then there's a point where he turns 40 and he thinks, I want to do something that has nothing to do with profits. I want to have an impact on the world. And that hit me because I felt the same way before I turned 40. And that's what I want to talk to him about when I get the chance to. You know, it's not necessarily that you go into a conversation with a certain topic in mind of, you know, maybe you do want to talk to Richard Branson about how he started all of his companies or how the Virgin brand came about. But then if you hadn't read the book, you wouldn't know about that small detail. It's literally like two sentences out of 562 pages in which he mentions this. And to me, to know that is going to make your conversation so much more valuable and rich and connected. So that's why I read all of the books that people who come on my show have written. 
I find that it's a really important part. Uh, and, and I also stalk them. Just like I stalk clients, I stalk every guest I have. I look at their website. I look at their social media. I want to know what they're about. I don't just want to know what their business is. And a big part of that also is that when they come on the show, I tell them up front, I want you to share your journey because nobody's journey is the same. We all have twists and turns and forks in the road. And whatever we started out to be, we take a turn and we end up being something else. And I want to connect and hear that personal story, that journey. I think another important part to mention is the fact that I don't write down questions. I don't provide questions to my guests ahead of time. I don't write them for myself. I do write maybe notes of, you know, I want to hit this topic or um, there was something in the book that I, I found relevant or you mentioned this and, you know, on social media the other day. And so I want to talk about that, but I'm not committed to one single thing. And I think that's really important too, because oftentimes someone will go into an interview and there's only one goal in mind. And that's what they want to go after. We want to talk about this one specific topic. So it can be forced. But if you let the conversation flow, then it's going to go naturally wherever it's meant to go. And that's what makes it authentic. (laughs) Let's reuse the word that's used too much. But it's also what gives you the chance and the opportunity to offer your input and experience. That's really what a conversation is about. Whether you want to look at this as an interview or a conversation, you know, maybe that's where the difference lies. And that's why I go into all of my interviews as conversations. Uh, But at the same time, I'm learning from the person and I'm hoping that all of the listeners learn from them as well. You know, it is different than when you go into a TV interview and that is topic specific and they have their questions in mind, but I guarantee you that they're coming up with additional questions as they're getting the answers given to them by the person they're interviewing. You know, this is the real beauty of a podcast versus TV journalism is that you don't have to be rigid. You don't have to be stuck on a certain format. Remember that a podcast is yours. So however you want to make it feel, sound, uh, and, and simply work is completely up to you. And there is no right or wrong answer to any of it. If you want to write down your questions and have them ahead of time, then fantastic. For me personally, that doesn't work. It feels scripted. And I don't want a conversation to feel scripted. I truly want to go into each and every interview wanting to get to know the other person, wanting to get the chance to learn something for myself. You know, a great example is the interview I recently did with Anne Coquette, who had written this book where it's basically a mini MBA that you don't have to go to school for. She's created this network of people for you to learn from. And yet, as we got to talking, I discovered that she knows about investing. And that was something I wanted to learn more about. I had no idea that going in outside of reading the investment portion of her book, that she was going to land so much knowledge on me, that I was going to walk away feeling confident more about knowing how to invest, about making these investments. And yet by being natural and letting the conversation go where it was going to go, that's what came up. And to me, that's the beauty of an interview. It's that connection and just allowing a conversation between two people go wherever it's going to go. You could go into the coffee shop at Starbucks and you could sit down with someone and just get to know them. And that's really what the podcast interviews that I do are about. And I think that's what makes a great interview. Another point to bring up is that the interview is not about you. I think that a lot of times we hear people want to hear themselves talk, and that certainly does not make for a great interviewer. This is about the person that's coming on to share of themselves, to share their expertise, to share their story. And so it's important that you take the time to listen to what they're saying. This is also the only way that you're going to engage with whatever their answers are, to share your input and your experience in it as well. But 
oftentimes I'll look at the transcript and it will split out how much talking time I had versus how much talking time my guest had. And I like to keep it like one third or less is me because this is about the person who's coming on the show. And I think if you look at it and it's 50-50 or you're 75% and your guest is less than 25, then you're not really doing the interviewing because an interviewer asks questions. They don't give all of the answers. They don't have to have input on everything. You know, I do say engage and share your side of things, but this isn't fully about you. So when I hear someone ask a question and then basically answer it for themselves, then to me, you're you're not really giving very much respect either to the guest because you're not letting them take the stage. It's their moment to answer the questions. This is their time to have the stage, not necessarily yours. And so if you're making this about your guest, then you're already 10 steps ahead of a lot of other interviewers. I'm going to put together a little cheat sheet for you that you can download from the show notes that really are just little tips of what you can do to be a good interviewer. And they really are going to be all about making it about the other person, engaging on a level that still allows them to be on the stage and for you to be in the audience. It's about being fully engaged and present in the process, not being distracted by anything else. It's about doing your research and your homework ahead of time. If you don't have enough time, then ask for it. I have authors who will come to me and say, you know, I want, I'd like to be on the show or I have a book coming out. And I'm very upfront and say, this is the time that I need to get through your book because I will not interview you until I've read your book entirely. And they appreciate that because they want you to be able to interview them properly. It's, it's no fun if someone comes on your show and you have no idea what they do, who they are, where they've been. It's not the same as if you've done that homework and that research ahead of time. So those are big, big things that I think it takes to be a good interviewer. I really believe that if you go into an interview with these things in mind and continue practicing it, then you can be a great interviewer. It doesn't take going to school or learning how to interview or anything like that in order to make it happen and to make a conversation go from good to great. So if you're considering interviewing people on your shows or you're considering launching a podcast and you want to do this or have Facebook Lives or Instagram Lives, interviewing is going to be a part of all of those processes. So why not go into it with just a little bit of knowledge of knowing what you can do ahead of time to make things great, to make it engaging so that people want to hear you interview other people. It's a talent. It's a gift. And it's really just a basic human thing to be able to communicate with others, but to do so on a level that shows that you also care. You're not just in it for a question and answer period. You're in it to really get to know another person. And that is the key to a great interview. 